Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 and 5 tutorial. So in today's video what we're going to be going over is how to create and set up an auto jump mechanic and feature from many many popular games. The most popular example I can imagine of is Minecraft. So let me just hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So if we're running around I can walk up to this object here and it will automatically jump onto it for me. I do not need to jump, it will do it for me. If I were to go here it will do the same thing. However if I go to something which is too high to jump onto nothing will happen, it won't try and jump, it will just walk straight into it. But obviously something lower down which we can jump onto, it will obviously do. And now you notice I'm jumping straight over them, that's just because I'm continuing to walk forwards while jumping. But obviously I can jump and then stop to land on it perfectly like so. So this is what we're we'll going over and creating today. And also yeah, I should mention if it's too small, it also won't jump on it, it will just walk straight over. So we're only going to be auto jumping on things that we can and should actually be jumping on. So like I say, this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. And also before I get into the rest of this video, I just want to say that we've set a new goal for ourselves of trying to hit 50,000 subscribers before the end of the year. So if you do enjoy my content and you do want to see more of it, please do make sure to subscribe down below as it really does help me and the channel out quite a lot. So again, if you enjoy what you see, please consider subscribing as we're trying to hit 50,000 subscribers. So thank you and let's get back on with the video. So the first step we want to take for the creating the auto jump mechanic is to open up our character blueprint. And that's the only place we're going to be doing code. So we want to hit control space to open our content browser. And for me it's going to be content, third person, blueprints, BP, third person character. But for you it's going to be third person, first person or whatever you've named it. Now in here what we're going to do is find some empty space in the event graph, right click and get event tick. Now if you've already used event tick, don't worry you can hold down S and get a sequence with then zero going to the code you already have and then one going to the code we're about to create. Now you may hear a lot of people including myself say to not use event tick too much and while that is very true it doesn't mean never use it so there are cases where it is useful and you do really need to use it because for this we want to constantly be checking whether we should or shouldn't jump. Now you can instead just make it check for when you're moving instead of on event tick however for what we're creating it's not a problem at all doing it on tick. So what we want to do first is we want to make sure we're not already jumping because if we are already jumping or if we're falling we don't want to be able to jump again. So what we're going to do is right click and get is falling. Don't type get just is falling and it should come out of the character movement like so. So now we know if this player is already jumping or falling. But again we want to make sure we're doing this code when we are not jumping or falling. So we're going to come out the return value and get a not boolean just inverse this value here. Then this will go into a branch. So we're going to hold down B, left click to get the branch, connecting that into event tick, and the condition being this not is falling. So again, if we're not already falling or jumping. Then after this, we want to go into a line trace to see if we're close enough to something to be able to jump. So before we go into the rest of this, let me actually also go to the viewport. And in this viewport here, we want to set up the heights for our jumping. So I'm going to add in an arrow, like so, and I'm going to name this one auto jump height low so the lowest an object can be for us to jump onto it which I'm going to put around about there then I'll control C control V to duplicate this renaming this to high and moving that to the highest point it can be so basically anywhere in between these arrows is the height at which we can jump onto so if anything's below it we're not going to bother jumping we'll just step onto it if anything's above it we won't jump onto it as it's too high up we don't want to even try and jump but if it's in between these two heights, that's a perfect height for us jumping onto. So I'll compile and save that. And then we'll go back to the event graph here and continue on with the code now that we've got those heights perfectly set up for us. And again, you can obviously customize those heights to be perfect for you. And you might want to just mess about with it after we've created the code to see what those heights look like. Out of true of this branch, we're going to get a line trace by channel. Just a normal line trace, not a multi. And the first one we're going to do is to see if it's high enough. So we're using auto jump height low. So we're going to get auto jump height low. Out of this, we're going to get world location. The return value of that, we're going to start of the line trace. As we just want to start where this one is, because it's also obviously directly on the player. So do not move them forwards, backwards, left, right, only up and down. Then out of this again, we want to get the forward vector, as we obviously want to be checking in the forward facing direction, so the way the player is traveling in. And out of this, we want to get a multiply, and we're going to right click the bottom value, converting the pin, and changing it to a float. The value I'm going to be using for this is 150. 
Now you may want to go higher or lower, but for me I found anything lower than this, the player kind of collided with the object we're trying to jump onto, it would still work but wouldn't look great, and anything further they'd obviously be then too far away to land on it. So you can customise this for whatever you want again, as it might be different for your own custom character. Then this wants to go into end of the line trace, but before we do that, we want to come out of the get world location again, and get an addition, and then connect the multiply into there, and the addition into end. And the reason we're doing that is this just keeps it going in a nice straight line going forwards. So I'm going to tidy this one up a little bit, and then I'll get back to you. So now that this is a bit more neat and tidy, we can continue on with the code. Because we don't need to change anything else here, all we've done once again is make sure we're now drawing a line from the player. So what I can do is I'll put that onto full duration so we can test it and look at it later on. After this we want to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that into the return value because what this is going to do is see if we've hit something. If we haven't hit anything we don't want to do anything because that means we've got nothing to jump onto, but if we have hit something that means there is something high enough for us to try and jump onto. So what we want to do now is see if it is too high to jump onto. So we're going to select all the code we just created with the line trace and everything going into the line trace but not the bit before it. Control C and Control V connecting that into true of the branch there. And then I'm just going to move this down a little bit to again make it look a bit more nice and organized. And the only thing we need to change with this code is the auto jump height low. We can drag and drop auto jump height high onto that instead. Everything else will be the exact same. So again we're seeing if it's high enough, now we're seeing if it's too high. So once again, we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting the condition into the return value. But this time, we want to do something between the return value and the condition. And that is going to be a not boolean. Not a not equal, a not boolean. Connecting the condition in there, like so. And the reason we're doing this is because this is again seeing if we've hit something, but we only want to jump if we haven't hit anything. Because if we have hit something, that means the object is too tall for us to jump onto. So we don't want to jump if we hit something. We only want to jump if we don't hit anything. So out of true, we can now just get jump. And although this is on event tick, again, this code isn't going to fire off if we're already falling. So this won't continue working once we're in the air. But as soon as we land, it will continue to work again. And that's the code now done, fully working a setup for us. So we can hit compile save that and minimize it and because I've got these on for duration we can see this working in action. So if I hit play you can see at the bottom of my player we have that first line with the minimum height for us to jump onto and if I walk around that's updating as well and if I were to walk into this object here you'll notice we now get one coming out the top as well and we're not jumping because this is too high as you can clearly see here anything above this height isn't going to actually let us jump but anything in between them will. So I hope that will make sense as to why we've done those two line traces. So if I were to walk up to this object here, you'll notice it is going to actually work because it is low enough. So that will then allow us to jump straight on there perfectly like so. And it'll work over on this one as well. So then we just turn off these line traces and we'll get back to doing the final overview. So we'll change those to four non. That's what I mean by tidying them off. So I think that'll be it for this video as we've done everything we want to do. We've set up an auto jump system in which obviously what is going to happen is we are going to auto jump when we go up to an object which is high enough for us to jump onto but not too high for us to not be able to jump onto so it won't even attempt and again something low enough like this it won't even bother trying. So thanks so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.